skeptically. Oh, he's gonna jump. Look. Me. I've never laughed so much in my life while filming any movie as I did with these jumping spiders. Oh, it caught the thread. And it walked across the thread to the other hand. What a ride. If anyone wants to try, go ahead. If not, they'll just say the fat guy's had enough. Beautiful, intelligent, and incredibly deadly. This is the definition of spiders that are the stars of today's episode. Here's one of those stars. Tiny, yes, but amazing. In this little creature, there's as much awesomeness as in all my other spiders combined. I think most people who have dabbled in spider keeping know what jumping spiders are, what they are, and that you can keep them as pets. They also know what makes jumping spiders special. These are the little spiders I've already made a few videos about, and I've managed to record a few hunts as well. Jumping spiders, as the name suggests, jump at their prey, right? Besides, their English name, jumping spiders, also indicates that these spiders can jump and they do it quite well. Literally last Sunday, I managed to get a pair of jumping spiders from the species Phidippus regius. This is one of the largest jumping spiders you can find in the world. Yes, this is the specimen right here. As you can see, it's not big, and it's also not the largest jumping spider in the world. The largest jumping spiders in the world belong to the Hylias genus, and they can reach up to about 3 centimeters in body length. These spiders are not giants, and among the entire Soltisidae family, because that's their scientific name, the jumping spiders, most species out of the roughly 5,500 species, a little over that, oh, it jumped, well, they don't reach more than a centimeter in body length, right? So spiders are rather tiny, and it's the same situation in Poland. Actually, I often come across this statement that, wait, do we really have jumping spiders in Poland too? And then I look at my conversation partner with a doubtful look and say, yes, absolutely. In Poland, we have probably several dozen species of jumping spiders, most of which are small, and unfortunately many of them are very rare. But it's exactly their size, their smallness, that often makes people simply not notice them. If you want to see what a Polish jumping spider looks like, I'll put a link somewhere here to a video about the most popular species found in Poland, which is of course Salticus senicus. Oh, it's the harlequin jumping spider, see what it does. I've never laughed so much in my life while recording any video as I did with these jumping spiders. Uh, it's just something brilliant what these spiders do. And among other things, because they're so hilarious and look the way they do, that's exactly why the character Lucas the Spider was created based on jumping spiders. And Lucas the Spider is an animated spider that supposedly helps people get rid of, or at least partially overcome, their arachnophobia. And honestly, I'm not surprised they chose a jumping spider to create Lucas the Spider, because jumping spiders are considered some of the cutest spiders in the world. I'm able to... Jesus, what is he doing? Oh man, this animal is so funny. All right, but besides being cute, first of all, they're very intelligent. And here, very intelligent isn't just empty words. Apparently, I heard somewhere in a magazine that the ability to perceive numbers of such a jumping spider, a smart jumping spider, sorry, an intelligent jumping spider, it's roughly comparable to the way a one-year-old child perceives numbers. So these spiders really have, compared to other arthropods, to other spiders, a powerful dose of intelligence that allows them to hunt in a variety of ways. And here, as an example, I'll give you the genus Portia. The genus Portia are, of course, jumping spiders that are found in tropical regions of the world, among others, in Madagascar, among others, in the Philippines. And the genus Portia has developed incredible ways through evolution to catch its prey. Since these spiders mostly hunt other spiders, right? A spider hunts a spider. What's more, the spiders they hunt often spin web, so they're typical web spiders. They sit on their webs. Jumping spiders from the Porsche genus had to figure out how to get to such a spider, right? Well, jumping onto another spider's web isn't a good idea. You might get tangled up and that spider could just eat you.
So what does such a Porsche do? Listen, a Porsche first locates such a spider and it can even sneak up on it. What's more, this spider knows where the front of its prey is and where the back is, while for a tarantula it doesn't really matter, it just bites wherever it can. And if it approaches such prey, it can imitate the prey of that web spider. It uses its legs to make the web vibrate so that the spider sitting on the web gets interested and comes closer, and then Portia attacks. It's absolutely absurd what kind of skill these spiders have. It's like they're the special forces among arachnids. Another technique I've heard they use, which is also impressive, is that they hunt spiders from the Therididae family. And this spider simply spits webbing and then the prey is immobilized. And a certain species from the Porsche genus in the Philippines figured out that you can't approach such a spider from the front. You have to approach it from behind and then attack it from behind. And since those jumping spiders also often hunt Porsche, it's like, you know, a one-on-one -on -one fight to see who's smarter. And of course, Porsche is the smarter one. The exception is, for example, when a female spider from the jumping spider family has an egg sac. She carries the egg sac in her chelicerae and then Portia knows it's an egg sac and knows she can approach from the front because the jumping spider won't be able to spit at her since it's holding the egg sac. What kind of genius among spiders do you have to be to figure something like that out? I've admired the Portia genus enough, let's get back to the topic. This is Phidippus regius. That's the scientific name of this jumping spider. In Polish, it's called the Royal Jumping Spider, which is one of the most popular jumping spiders in captivity. There aren't many of these captive bred jumping spiders, because it's generally difficult to import various tropical species, which are often beautiful and colorful. For example, the Maratus genus, Zark, which are the peacock spiders that dance and raise their legs. If you've ever seen a video with spiders from the Maratus, genus, those are also jumping spiders. These spiders, meaning jumping spiders from the Phidippus genus, are great for breeders for several reasons. First of all, they're quite large for jumping spiders, which as we've said is unusual for this whole family. Secondly, they're attractive. And here it's important to note that spiders from this species, first of all, have sexual dimorphism, right? So the male differs from the female in coloration and also a bit in size. The female is more robust, more solidly built. The male has more uh, let's say in quotation marks, muscular front legs. He has a different pattern on the abdomen, a different pattern on the carapace, a slightly different color of the chelicerae, because it's also cool that these spiders have colorful shiny chelicerae. So that's attractive from a visual point of view, right? For people who keep spiders. And the other thing is, since they occur over a very wide area, and they're probably most popular in Florida, they've developed individual variability depending on the location they're found in. Another interesting fact, Emma, from what I know, the entire genus Philippus, which I count to be about 90 species give or take, and most of them inhabit areas of North and South America, but there's even one species in Bangladesh. And I think there are a few in India as well. Where did they come from? I have no idea. Anyway, they're there. Basically, oh, it's going to jump. Look. Oh, and how long does a spider like this live? From what I know, about two to three years, I think you can keep it without any problem. Although I've already had a few of these jumping spiders, they all grew up and died. So that's how it is, unfortunately. They're not tarantulas, they don't live for a dozen or even dozens of years, but we can still enjoy having a little jumping spider for quite a while. And you know, this is a spider that can see, unlike most spiders, it can actually see. What's more, it's active during the day, you get that, so at night it goes to sleep. Normally these spiders go to sleep at night. Maybe it's not sleep in the way we understand the word, but it's still a kind of lethargy arrest. Then they close themselves in their little nest and just rest, and during the day they hunt again. And yes, they hunt, as I already mentioned, using their eyesight. These spiders have excellent vision. This is one of the best visions among all arachnids. Truly brilliant. They have 360 degree vision, so it's hard to sneak up on this spider. And these spiders are interactive in a way. That means since they can see, if you wave your finger, sometimes they'll follow it. So overall, these little animals are hilarious, adorable, and they're very interesting to observe, especially how they hunt, right? Because they hunt, as I mentioned before, by jumping on their prey and using their strong front legs to hold them down, then they pierce them with their chelicerae and inject venom. Of course, these spiders, like the vast majority of spiders, are venomous. They have venom, they have venom glands, and they have pretty powerful chelicerae. So I think they wouldn't have a problem biting a human, but they're not really the kind of spiders that are eager to bite anyone. So they're totally harmless little animals. As for the conditions, I keep them at room temperature and they're living just fine, showing no signs that anything is wrong. As for misting, I spray them about once a week so they can have something to drink. I've seen several times how they just drink the water droplets. It's normal, every animal needs to drink, so we have to give them water too. 
Oh, it's staring at me. And now if I were to recommend such a jumping spider to anyone, honestly, I would rather recommend a more mature one. Why? Because the small ones from what I've heard are fragile. That means it doesn't take much to either dry out such a spider or make it too wet and then the jumping spider simply dies. Since these are true spiders, higher spiders, what are true spiders, higher spiders? There's a video about that somewhere here. They are simply much more sensitive to unwanted changes in their environment, which can cause their death. Besides, spiders are phenomenal, they're brilliant, intelligent, and they can hunt prey much, much bigger than themselves, even twice their own size. And that's also great because these spiders, even though they're small, are very, very strong. So are you going to jump or not? Hop, he jumped. And that's it. That's the kind of fun you have with jumping spiders, right? I don't know what else to say. I can only recommend them. I'm always really happy whenever I get the chance to record a video about jumping spiders because you just want to look at them. You want to observe their behavior, that jerky movement they have. They also walk in a very characteristic way, like they have, I don't know, pink pinch, something like that. So they're absolutely brilliant little creatures. And at the very end, two announcements. I would like to warmly invite you if someone doesn't want to, thinks that the fat guy has had enough, that's okay. I totally respect that. All right, this little face is saying goodbye, and I'm saying goodbye too. Take care. Bye.